I believe there is something to be said behind the marketing for Resident Evil 8, also known as Resident Evil Village. A lot of people will say that the marketing for Resident Evil Village is extremely well done, and I agree with those people, to a point. But on the other side, there is a smaller amount of the community who is saying that the marketing behind Resident Evil Village was misleading. So let's have a conversation about why Resident Evil Village's marketing was both genius and well done, but also detrimental in itself. Full disclosure, this is not a review on the game Resident Evil Village. This is purely a review on the marketing for the game. And although this is a review on the marketing of the game, there is going to be spoilers about the entirety of the game throughout this entire video. When the trailers came out for Resident Evil Village, there was a lot of hype around the game. Resident Evil 7 was fairly well received by a lot of critics and fans. Even though it made the move from third person to first person, it was still generally well received by everybody who got their hands on it or watched playthroughs of it. So when Resident Evil 8 got announced, people were of course very excited to see a sequel to the previous success of 7. However, when the trailer came out for Resident Evil 8, there was one teeny little aspect about Resident Evil 8 in its trailer that immediately got the most attention out of everything. I'm of course talking about Lady Dimitrescu. The trailer featured this extremely tall woman named Lady Dimitrescu in a very long white flowing dress and an enormous big black hat. And both people who knew nothing about Resident Evil 8 and fans of the Resident Evil series latched on to Lady Dimitrescu started making memes about it, started making Twitter posts and TikToks and YouTube videos, all discussing nothing else but Lady Dimitrescu. There were many things shown in the trailer for Resident Evil 8, but the thing that everybody latched onto was the character of Lady Dimitrescu. Now, of course, the Resident Evil 8 marketing team saw what the community and fans and non-fans were latching onto from their trailer, and they did what you would think any respectable marketing community would do. They went whole hog into it. The marketing team for Resident Evil 8 then started making sponsor deals with other YouTubers talking about how much damage it would do to your head if she stepped on you because the community kept on talking about wanting Lady Dimitrescu to step on them. They also partnered with companies like G Fuel to make a brand new shaker bottle that was taller than their normal ones and with an entire new flavor and on the bottle itself had the image of Lady Dimitrescu. The marketing team even made their own Twitter account and posted posted nothing but videos of Lady Dimitrescu from the trailer alongside viral TikTok songs edited in such a way to really showcase the figure and personality of Lady Dimitrescu. The marketing team saw what people latched onto from the trailer and they went whole hog into it. And personally, that is a brilliant idea, and it clearly worked for them because the game sold very well upon launch. But here's where we get into the issues. There was a lot of promising things around Lady Dimitrescu as a character, as well as the castle she resides in that is overlooking the village. You could see it in the trailer, you could see it in screenshots of the game. It was very well known that Lady Dimitrescu and this giant ass castle that she resides in would be alongside the village and would be featured heavily in the game. There was also talks and confirmations that Lady Dimitrescu would follow you around as you played the game, similar to Mr. X from Resident Evil 2 or Nemesis from Resident Evil 3. However, when the game launched and people got their physical hands on the game itself and got to play it for themselves or watch playthroughs of it, well, I won't say it was false marketing but I don't believe I'm wrong in saying the marketing was misleading. Because while characters did get to meet Lady Dimitrescu, and she was a prominent figure in the beginning, her castle and her as a character were not all the game really seemed to hype it up to be. The way the marketing team had really made it seem was that Lady Dimitrescu was going to be a very prominent figure in this game. A lot of people thought that she was probably the main villain, similar to Mr. X and Nemesis from Resident Evil 2 and 3. They were primary villains that stalked you around while you played the game. And while Lady Dimitrescu was a villain and she did stalk you around, 
You only really got to interact with her as a character for maybe if you stretched it out an hour of the game total. And in a game that will take you roughly eight to 10 hours of playtime, only having one hour of a character that was heavily, heavily featured in all the marketing really seems misleading. Because while you do get to see her and interact with her and her castle, and she does stalk you while you're in that castle, after your half an hour to an hour of playtime with that character, you are then pushed out of the castle and you never return to it ever again. Instead, you now have to go through the other three prominent villains of the game, which were never heavily featured in any marketing material whatsoever. Now, is this a bad thing that they weren't heavily featured in the marketing? Honestly, no, because once again, like I'd mentioned before, the marketing team saw what the community latched onto and was really enjoying and they went deeper into that and they knew if they would do that, they would get in touch with their audience and the audience would then feed back into the meme and the jokes and it would just be a self-fulfilling prophecy. People latching onto Lady Dimitrescu, Resident Evil marketing team giving more marketing around Lady Dimitrescu and it just kept going back and forth, back and forth. However, once you now get into the actual game itself and realize that Lady Dimitrescu is only in it for maximum an hour if you really stretch out the castle playtime, the other three characters, the other three prominent villains are not featured in any other marketing. And of course, Lady Dimitrescu, if you've already played or watched the game, you would already know, isn't even the primary villain. Which to myself and a couple of other people who may have purchased the game or at least watched playthroughs of it, it's a little bit unsatisfying. You watch a bunch of marketing for a video game that you're excited to see, but maybe you latch on to the idea that Lady Dimitrescu is going to be the primary villain. The castle is going to be the primary area alongside the village that you explore. But when you get into the game itself and you find out that it only probably about an hour worth of your playtime, and the rest of it is done in other locations you know nothing about with characters that you've never seen before, it's a little off-putting. A more well-known piece of media that had very misleading marketing, or some would even say false advertising and marketing altogether, was 2016 Suicide Squad with Jared Leto as Joker. The trailers for Suicide Squad made it seem like the entire Suicide Squad was going up against Joker. It was going to be Joker versus the whole Suicide Squad. Jared Leto had all kinds of time to get into the role of Joker. He was second build as Joker with Will Smith being first build. Even the posters themselves. Look at this poster. It has him standing away from the entire rest of the Suicide Squad, singling him out. The marketing around Suicide Squad heavily, heavily anchored on Joker as a character. But then when Suicide Squad came out, most of you know what happened. But for those who don't, Suicide Squad as a film is two hours and 17 minutes long. Joker is featured for seven minutes of that film. The second build, actor, Joker, what the marketing heavily revolved around, only featured his character for seven minutes out of two hours and 17 minutes of runtime. And when you look at something like that, and you look at something like Resident Evil 8, where it's an eight to 10 hour game, and the marketing was heavily revolved around Lady Dimitrescu as a character and her castle, but you only get to experience that character and her area for about an hour at most, it starts to feel roughly the same. Now, is the marketing team for Resident Evil 8 Village to blame for this problem? Honestly, I don't know. I don't know enough about behind the scenes for video game creation to really make this judgment because it could be one of two things. One, it could be that the game development team and the marketing development team never really interact that much. The marketing team simply has a trailer that they need to put out and then when they watch the reaction for the trailer, they see what people latch onto and they double down on that and they just keep marketing to that thing that everybody latches onto and the development team just keeps working on the game without these two ever talking to each other about what's actually going on. And if that is the case of what happened here with Resident Evil Village, then unfortunately, it's not really anybody's fault. The marketing team did an excellent job marketing the game. The only big issue was that their marketing was very, very narrow on what was actually presentable in the game. And what a lot of people expected to find, they did, 
but it was only for an hour at most. And while we're on the subject of misleading marketing for Resident Evil Village, let's take a look at the cover art. What we have here is Chris Redfield, half of his face merging with a lichen from the game. Now, is Chris Redfield in the game? Yes. Are lichens in the game? Yes. Is Chris Redfield a prominent enough character to be the face of the cover of the game? Personally, I think not. Are lichens a big enough creature in the game to be on the cover? Honestly, I would say so, considering the amount of variations of lichens you experience throughout the game, and they are present throughout the entirety of the game, I would say so. But the way this picture is presented makes it seem like Chris Redfield is struggling or turning into a lichen himself. Now, is that what happens in the game? No, absolutely not. Chris Redfield has nothing to do with the lichens, and the lichens have nothing to do with Chris Redfield whatsoever. They're both similarly just present in the game, and near the end, Chris Redfield shoots up a ton of them while trying to save Rose. However, this cover art makes it seem like Chris Redfield is struggling with lycanthropy or lycanthropy is struggling with Chris Redfield or whatever, but that's not what's happening in the game at all. And it seems really misleading to put this style of image on the cover of the game. If, in fact, the marketing team had no discussions with the game development team while they were doing the promotion for the game, then there's really nothing that can be done about this. It was simply the marketing team having a trailer show for their game, having one aspect of that trailer get singled out by the entire community, which then latched onto this and made this a giant promotional product for the game. And this team saw what was being done with this character and they doubled down on it because they knew it would work. And it did, no fault of that. However, the game itself then being created and being done, an enormous majority of the game is not being shown by the marketing team. And that seems misleading to me. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Am I wrong in this style of thinking? Do you agree with my style of thinking? Do you want to discuss it? Leave any and all comments down below in the comment section and I'll be sure to reply to them. But that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed the video, tell your friends. If you didn't, you tell me. I hope you have yourself a good one. If you enjoyed this style of video, I have a couple more videos here about Dungeons and Dragons if you're interested in that type of thing. If you'd like to support me in future videos of this type of style, I have a Patreon that you can check out with links down below. And if you'd like to talk with me live and have a conversation about Resident Evil 8 or just other fantasy stuff in general. I stream live on twitch.tv two to three times a week. Without further ado, thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a good one, everybody. School. Cool.